let's take a look at this superheat and subcooling. I have 370 grams in the system right now, so I'm low. And if you remember from the first, was it the first video, second video? Don't remember. Uh, I had a subcooling of 40 something and a superheat. Well, we're not looking at superheat and we're not looking at pressures. But let's keep filling the system. And let's put a little, oops, let's put a little more refrigerant in the system. Open it up. Now I got 420 grams in the system. Look at the superheat go up. Now let me put the, go to 450. Now I went to 470. 500 is what the label could call for. Now, if you remember before, I recovered the refrigerant out of here and the refrigerant was 550 grams is what I recovered out of here. It called for 500, 450 to 500 grams. They had 550 in here and I had a super cool subcooling of 41 or 44 degrees subcooling. But now, I properly charge it and oh, my leg is hitting that and I'm messing up the scale there now that I'm taking a picture but now instead of 41 44 degrees subcooling I now have 26 degrees so if I add another ounce and a half in here and bring it up to five or say I bring it up to 550 grams that will jump up to 40 what was it 46 Four, no 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 41, 44 degrees of subcooling by being about roughly an ounce and a half overcharged. But now that I'm charged correctly within the parameter of 450 and 500 grams, we're at 26 degrees. Do you see how much an ounce and a half can make in difference on how much you stack up the refrigerant inside the condenser? More is not better. All right, that's it for now. I just wanted to show that. Uh, learn more about superheat and subcooling i just listed well uh, from this video it's probably a week or two uh about a podcast by brian orbs hvac school about superheat and subcooling see you guys later